This is the brand new Traxxas Minimax, and we're gonna get the elephant out of the room right away. There are two reasons to buy a small RC car, price and size. This is $270, you're not buying this because of price, but now let's take a look and see if Traxxas has made the best car at this size. As you can see here, the Minimax is only a little bit longer than an Arma Typhon Grom, but what Traxxas has done is put huge tires on this truck and give it a lot more ground clearance. And it's the ground clearance that primarily limits where you can run these Minis, which means this thing should be able to go places a lot of other Minis can't go. Anyone familiar with the 4S Max is gonna be immediately comfortable with how this thing looks. The body looks very, very similar, just smaller. The sledgehammer tires look very similar, just smaller. And underneath, it looks very, very similar, just smaller. This does have a clip clipless body system. There are two clips under the front and two more under the rear. And this Traxxas clipless system actually works very well. They've been using this same system on a lot of their vehicles. And overall, it's pretty darn effective. This body's medium thick and feels okay, though there's no support in the front, rear, or center. And I suspect without reinforcing it, it's probably gonna get crushed pretty easily. Though we'll just have to see how it survives when we bash it. For now, it looks really nice. And whereas from the outside, this does look like a Traxxas Max, underneath the hood, this is a completely unique platform. And there's really nothing shared between it and any other Traxxas. The only exception to that will be the electronics. This does have the BL2S brushless system in it, which is the exact same system that they use in 110 scale vehicles. And that's gonna be a bit of a theme on this truck as this servo is also a full 110 scale servo, though it is plastic geared. We'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. Mounting up into their fairly proprietary battery tray, we have the 3500 milliamp hour 2S LiPo battery. This is included with the truck. To charge that, we also get a tiny little USB-C powered Traxxas ID charger. This thing's actually surprising surprisingly powerful for its size. It's putting out 8.4 volts at two amps. That's almost 18 watts. And it should charge this battery in a little under two hours from completely dead. Of course, that's not very fast, but it is a lot faster than some included chargers on other vehicles. In order to achieve that, you're gonna need a USB-C power supply that's capable of providing five to six volts at three amps. That means a lot of older, cheaper power supplies probably won't work. I do have pretty much every upgrade that you can get for this truck from Traxxas on the way, though we probably won't be getting them anytime soon, unfortunately. If you do wanna see that upgrade video, make sure you get subscribed because it will be coming. Here we have the Sledgehammer tires. These look very similar to all the other Sledgehammer tires that Traxxas has been selling recently. They're on 12 millimeter hexes. The foams feel pretty soft, though the tires themselves are a very hard compound. These tires are approximately 100 millimeters in diameter, and they're about 50 millimeters wide. This is larger than pretty much any tire you're gonna get on another Mini of this scale. And like I said, these tires are probably what's gonna allow this truck to go places other Minis simply can't. That being said, I've got an idea for some even larger tires we can try, assuming this thing survives bashing. Speaking of bashing, if you think that 2S power system isn't gonna be strong enough, make sure you stay tuned, because I do have a VXL 3S system we're gonna be putting in this later in the video. Behind those wheels, we've got a fairly basic looking setup. We've got a standard plastic hub here. In front of that is a fairly deep 12 millimeter hex. We do have a plastic washer behind that hex. And then we've got sealed bearings here, which is really nice to see on such a small car. A lot of small cars don't give you that. One of the things that sets the Arma Grom apart from pretty much every other Mini is ease of repair and maintenance. I'm definitely curious to find out how easy this thing is to work on. Let's dive in a little bit further. Traxxas is using these threaded pins. They have these on the Max as well. On the Max, they do tend to back out. I'm really curious to see if they back out on this during bashing. Pulling that hub off, we can see we've got a larger bearing in the rear, and then we've got some pretty basic looking plastic drive shafts. These look very similar to the older style drive shafts that came on the 3S vehicles, and on this smaller, lighter vehicle, we'll probably be just fine. Anybody familiar with the last 20 years of 1 tenth scale Traxxas will be familiar with these shocks. These are very standard looking 1 tenth scale ultra shocks. They definitely aren't the best on the full size 1 tenth scale vehicles, but they probably will hold up okay here. These are very basic plastic bladder style shocks. There's nothing exciting about them, but they should do the trick. On the plus side, because these shocks have been around for a very long time, there are already a lot of upgrades available for them. The reason that a lot of these parts that would be weaker on a 110 scale vehicle should be fine on here is that mass actually increases at the cube of size. So for a truck that's double the size, it's gonna be a lot more than double the weight. That's why these smaller cars are easier to make durable. Speaking of smaller, these cute little arms are side dependent and they feel medium flexible and very, very light. This rear bumper is reminiscent of the Max and X Max. It's very flexible. I don't expect it to give the back of the truck a lot of protection, we're probably gonna see the back of that body get crushed in pretty quickly. This little rear skid definitely reminds me of the Max. It's held in with four screws and it exposes the rear module. 
Once you take that skid off, the rear module is held in with four screws, one, two, three, four, and conveniently, they're all the same size. When you get those out, the rear module just slides right out the back. Removing that exposes a plastic spur gear. We'll take a closer look at this in just a second. But for now, let's dig into this rear differential. You do have to remove this module to get to the differential, and you do have to take these arms off to get to the screws for the diff. Six more screws lets us split the rear module, and again, they're the exact same size as the ones that take the rear module out. That's a really nice touch. Pulling this cover off exposes our rear differential, and this rear differential is just about one-tenth scale size, though I don't believe this is identical to an actual one-tenth scale diff. Removing what I believe so far has been the only 1.5 millimeter screw allows us to take the axle off the differential. Traxxas does offer upgraded steel axles for this car. Surprisingly, they're $100 just like the ones for the regular size Max R. I would have expected them to be quite a bit cheaper given that this is quite a bit smaller. We've got a nice beefy sealed bearing here. And as we pull this centered steel ring gear off, you can see that it has been leaking, though it might have just been a transport problem. We'll have to see whether or not it leaks in use. Underneath here, we have what's becoming a much more common type of differential. These have been in the hobby for a long time, but typically we see bevel gear style differentials. I suspect this is actually stronger because there's more tooth engagement. And then here you can see we have one of Traxxas's famous X-ring seals. These are different than O-rings in that they aren't round and they actually have a double lip profile on the inside. This creates a much more positive seal than an O-ring would, and these work really, really well. Unlike on most Traxxas cars, it does appear as though we're using a paper seal here. Generally, we do see some sort of silicon seal, but we've got a paper gasket here. And then inside here, we have what I believe is all steel gears. Yes, that's steel. So we have all steel gears inside the front and rear differentials. I do want to mention that the grease they're using, while not the nastiest in the industry, certainly isn't the nicest in the industry, and you probably will get in trouble if you get this on your couch. I'm going to get this rear module together, then we're going to take a look at the front module because it does look quite a bit more complicated. One thing I noticed while putting all of this together is that everything is very, very smooth. There's not a lot of play anywhere. And overall, so far, this feels very well built. I also noticed putting this back together that the upper arms are identical side to side, though the lower arms are side dependent. You only need one spare arm for the top, but you will need two spare arms for the bottom. Before we see what's hidden in this front end, let's go ahead and get these electronics out of the way. Traxxas chose a very interesting power system for this vehicle, and that's the BL2S brushless system. This was originally designed to replace their brushed systems in their 110th scale cars. And whereas it's not super powerful in the 110th scale cars, obviously it's gonna be a lot more powerful in this smaller vehicle. This receiver box is a new design, and it's pretty interesting. There's no actual seal here, and it looks like they might be relying on this foam around the edge to seal off the receiver. Pulling this out, it does look like it's just a standard TQ receiver, and I'm actually kind of surprised to see this design for the receiver box. I have a hard time imagining that this is actually going to be waterproof, and now I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to survive getting wet. Getting that out of the way, we actually have to cut a zip tie. I can't remember the last time I saw a zip tie on a Traxxas car. And then we can pull apart this three-way connector for the motor to ESC wiring. I'm not actually sure how this ESC is mounted in here. It's not using the normal screws. Let's go in from the bottom. Okay, those were holding in the ESC. And then these plates are kind of interesting. They're covering up multiple holes, I'm assuming for mounting different ESCs. So I'm not entirely sure how that's supposed to be done. We are gonna be putting a VXL3S in here soon. So I guess we're gonna find out. Taking those screws out should let us get this cover and motor out of here. As you can see, we have a 20 tooth centered steel pinion gear. We do have a ton of different holes we can use for mounting different pinions. And this is the BL2S motor. It is a brushless motor, but it's actually pretty small. This is a fan in the front and the motor is actually only from about here to here. I'm definitely curious to see just how well this motor is going to push the Minimax. One more screw and we should be able to take this central spine off. And that reveals the plastic spur gear, which we saw earlier, and then a plastic center drive shaft. I have my doubts as to whether or not this plastic center drive shaft is going to survive 3S. They do offer an upgrade, but it's not available yet. To easily get this full-size servo out of here, it looks like we need to take this upper bulkhead off. Okay, so interestingly, taking this upper bulkhead off didn't actually get us any better access to these screws. And it looks like that servo mount's actually part of the entire chassis. So the easiest way to do it would probably be to take this rear bulkhead off. Alternatively, it looks like we'll be able to get it out of there with a ball tip. And with that, all the electronics are free. Taking a closer look at this servo, we can see that it has an integrated servo saver into the servo horn. This might be a challenge to upgrade because this servo horn isn't very long and I don't think regular servo horns are going to work. 
This does, however, come apart fairly easily, so we could probably add some washers to this to increase the strength of the servo saver, but it is only plastic, so we can make it just so strong before it fails. Speaking of plastic, we've got a nice plastic geared servo here. This servo is waterproof, and it's actually waterproof. If we take off these screws, we can see we have O-rings in the screw heads, and then removing the rest of them, we can see we do have a gasket here on the bottom cover, and this is a standard brushed servo. Removing the top cover, we have another gasket and a bunch of plastic gears, as well as bushings instead of bearings on the output. So this is a pretty budget servo. The saving grace of this, of course, is because this is using all one tenth scale electronics. It'll be fairly easy and fairly inexpensive to upgrade this servo. For those of you that aren't familiar, Traxxas likes to use plastic geared servos on pretty much all their vehicles, including the X-Max. So seeing a plastic geared servo on this truck really is not a surprise. And now we should be just a few more screws away from this front bulkhead coming off and this thing being fully disassembled. This front skid plate's very similar to, but not identical to the rear skid plate. And we should just have two more screws here. With those out, the front module comes right off. That gives us a better view of the front end of that center drive shaft, though it still doesn't come out. And now we can get a good look at our steering rack. It looks like we have bushings and not bearings up here. We have non-adjustable steering links, kingpin style front hubs, and front arms that look very similar to the rear arms. I expect the front differential will be identical to the rear differential as well, so we're not gonna go any further into this one. Now that we have this all the way apart, I will say this is not the most simple vehicle to work on. The armor groms definitely have it beat for maintainability, but I guess that's not much of a surprise because it's designed just about like the regular Max, and it's also not the easiest vehicle to work on. Traxxas is claiming 30 plus miles an hour out of this thing. Let's get it all put back together and find out. And to do that, of course, we're going to be using the included battery and the included TQ transmitter. This is the most basic transmitter that Traxxas offers, and it is extremely basic. All you get is steering trim on this, and whereas it feels pretty good and it is a full-size transmitter with a foam wheel, it is probably the most basic RTR transmitter on the market right now. That being said, it should get the job done with this. Let's go see how fast it is. That feels pretty close to 30. Full throttle. Pretty stable. Let's give it just one more pass. Full throttle. All right, let's see what that was. And there we go, 29 miles an hour, that's pretty close. So as advertised, it's not fast, but is it the best mini backyard basher? Let's go find out.
don't know, guys. So far, I'm not that terribly impressed. Somehow this thing manages to feel both underpowered and overpowered at the same time. I think it's down to these tires not really getting good traction on any surface. This rubber is really, really hard, and the suspension doesn't work all that well either. It also kind of lacks air control and really likes to be on its roof. But who knows? Maybe it just needs some more power. Let's find out. This swap should be pretty straightforward, though I am a little curious as to how I'm supposed to mount this new ESC, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. The motor itself is pretty easy to remove. And putting the new motor in should just be a matter of swapping the pinion and swapping the mount. This pinion's got a 1.5 millimeter grub screw on it, so make sure you've got a good 1.5 millimeter bit. And then we want to make note of which screw holes were used. There doesn't seem to be any good way to check the alignment of the pinion to the spur gear because this cover obscures it as you're putting it on. So a trick for that is just to align the old motor and the new motor, and you can see where the grub screw was on the old motor. That'll let you get the gear in pretty much the same place. Now we just need to disconnect the ESC from the receiver. We're gonna pull it out of this box. As you can see, there's already some dirt in here, which means this is definitely not going to be waterproof. Okay, now for the interesting part. How do we mount the VXL 3S? With those inserts out, we do have two holes that line up, but typically this screws in from the top. So I think I'm gonna try to find bigger screws that will thread into these holes. Okay, so here's what I came up with. We're gonna use these wide-headed screws that are normally used for Traxxas servos, and then we're just gonna put a nut on the other side. And there we go, relatively straightforward, if not terribly easy to get this back nut on. Now we just need to put the motor back in. Tidy up the wiring, and then we just need to drop a 3S battery in. Fortunately, I have this Rolarlo 2200, which is basically the exact same size as the Traxxas battery, and fits in perfectly. And now let's go see if more power is more better. 29 on 2S, let's see how it does on 3S. That is a lot faster. Here we go. Full throttle. <laughs> All right. One more pass, that's fast. Full throttle. All right, we got it, let's see what that was. 50 miles an hour, that's a massive increase. Let's see if it'll survive some bashing. Well, 50 miles an hour is plenty of speed, and this thing feels awesome on the VXL 3S system, but unfortunately, not long after we started bashing, we lost front wheel drive. Let's see what happened. Okay, now that's a surprise. As you can see, part of the pinion gear shaft is still in the center drive shaft, and it sheared clean off right here. I very much would have expected this center drive shaft to fail first, but I'm not surprised that something in that area of the drivetrain failed because we have no center differential. Now, of course, the center differential is available as an upgrade, as is the power system, but once you pay for both those things, you're gonna be into this truck for a minimum of $450, and that is a lot of money. Now, I'm not saying you can't have fun with this truck as it comes out of the box, because because you can, but it is definitely underpowered, especially compared to the competition. Things like the Rolarlo ROG1, even the Rolarlo Omni Terminator, and compared to larger things that you can get for less money than it would take to make this 3S, such as the entire Arma 3S line that's been recently refreshed, and a bunch of other options. If this truck were 3S out of the box and it came with a center differential, or if it costs significantly less, maybe $200, I could definitely see where it would have a place. But these days, I don't know what Traxxas is doing, but they seem to be in their own world price-wise. In order for this thing to make sense at its price, it really needed to be great. Having taken it apart now, 
I can see cost cutting measures everywhere and it just isn't great. It's only okay. So if you want to buy a Mini Max and you're looking for an okay experience and you don't mind spending the money, there's some fun to be had here, but I think there's more fun to be had elsewhere for similar money, if not just a little bit more out of the box. That's just my opinion though, and my opinion is worth just about as much as anybody else's. I want to know your opinion. What do you think about this Mini Max? Let me know down in the comments. Get subscribed, then watch this video.